Do you think that um, you can see different patterns in different countries? Again, you know, this seems to be very much a Western uh, phenomenon, uh, if not even more pronounced in the English-speaking part of the Western. Uh, you got it in one. You got it in one. It's it's an American contagion that went global, as as American things do tend to. Like when America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. Especially culturally, funnily, we tend to think about politics or money or business or power. You know, hard power. But culturally, America is more dominant than any country has ever been in the history of humanity. Like it leaves the Roman Empire in the dust in terms of its influence globally. Um, and that influence, it's not, a, it's not a deliberate influence, it's not orchestrated by anyone, it's just that that's where the big media companies are, it's where the big tech companies are. Um, you know, obviously it's the leader of the Western world in terms of things like um, military action. Um, all the global um, multinational companies, you know, they tend to have their headquarters in America, products are designed to suit Americans. And there's a great book that was um, written some years ago about the way that uh, the American mindset has gone global. It's called Crazy Like Us, the globalization of the American psyche. And it traces American ways of thinking, for example, PTSD, which is something that came after the Vietnam War, and um, how that got exported. And it got exported by NGOs. So they would turn up in countries like Sri Lanka after the Civil War, obviously people who were distressed and traumatized, and they would interpret that through the American lens of PTSD. And, you know, you tell people that their distress fits a certain pattern and their distress tends to fit a certain pattern. And so people start to display the symptoms specifically of PTSD. So that's what we're seeing. And if you think then that it's an American uh, idea, this, this conception of what gender, man, woman mean is as American as the concept of race that America is currently exporting as well. Uh, which very much depends on America's own racial history and doesn't translate necessarily very well to other countries, then you see that it is most pronounced in the countries that are culturally and linguistically closest to America. So it's going to hit the English-speaking countries harder and earlier, those that have very close ties with America, and really the UK, for example, obviously your own country too, Canada. And in some ways, some of those countries have fewer safeguards against it because another thing about America is it's very polarized. So this isn't just an American contagion, it's a left-wing American contagion. It comes out of universities, uh, liberal cities, liberal coastal cities, industries like media, publishing, journalism. Um, whereas, you know, the, the Republican states don't have never bought into it in the same way and in fact are fighting back hard. But then you look at a country like Canada that doesn't have that same counterweight and it's just taken over Canada. So it's gone much further in Canada, in fact, even than in the US because there's no local opposition to stand up against it. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's about six or seven years, I think, now since I went to um, Asia for a reporting trip for The Economist when I was the finance editor. I was writing about something completely different, namely um, uh, the digitization of per personal banking. So I was going to look at places where everyone was doing everything on their phone already, which of course we all are now, but we weren't then. And so I visited Shanghai, Seoul and Singapore, and in each place I met our local correspondents and our local office people. And in Shanghai, there are foreign correspondents who are people who come from abroad, and then there are some local office staff who are hired. And we went out for dinner. I was telling them about this side thing that I was doing, that I was researching, because I was starting to think about my book and the expressions on the Chinese women's faces as I was trying to explain to them that there was anybody in the world who seriously thought that a little boy could really be a little girl because he said he was a little girl. They had never heard anything as insane in their lives. They thought I was doing an elaborate joke. <laughs>